Hey, Sherman. Hey, how you doing? Good, I'm good. I want to introduce introduce you to my followers. First, if there's anybody out there who hasn't watched me before, I'm Lisa Kipps Brown. I'm a business reimagineer. I help people reimagine their business so that they can reach their own personal goals. And my guest tonight is Sherman Williams, retired army captain who is the founder of an awesome company called Body Aqua. He has the most unique products and a great story behind it because he actually conceived of them while he was in combat in Iraq. And so Sherman, I want you to talk about your background. Tell us some of your background and tell us how you came up with your idea for the business. Um, oh, wait, I forgot to say, I'm so yeah. sorry. He is also, Body Aqua is also one of the primary sponsors of our NASCAR team that races to combat suicide races to combat veteran suicide. So I'm very sorry I left that out. If y'all watch NASCAR at all, you have probably seen his logo on our car this year. Number 26, Xfinity Series, Colin Garrett is the driver and the team is Sam Hunt Racing. So drum roll, go Sherman. <laughs> so um, you already introduced me, Sherman Williams, I'm born and raised in uh, South Carolina, Charleston. Um, oh. And you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's different, you know, it's all about your background, how you grew up. So me growing up, I I, I was blessed to have an actual father and uh, mother, you know, growing up. But in that, it was always a struggle. So I guess my whole aberration is like, I know there's more out there. I know there's more. So um, going through the motions, you know, wanting to grow up ahead of my time, you know, moving out getting multiple jobs and still struggling. I'm like, I'm working my butt off and I'm still broke. <laughs> so were you like 18 or something, like yeah, right like out of high school? 18, yeah, so I didn't go straight into the military. I wanted to see what, what life was about. And I'm like, oh my God, life is hard. I can't do <laughs> yes, it. Isn't it? I'm like, where does this come from? So <laughs> I actually called the recruiter, you know, and i like, hey, it's, I'm ready to go. So um, recruiter, you know, went through the ASVAB, went through everything, you know, went in as a, a, a private, you know, and um, did 25 years and just nonstop. So once I got in, I, I really start finding a niche of, uh, of a calling. And then from that experience and actually transitioning from the enlisted, enlisted side to the officer side, I just had an epiphany, you know, things just changed my outlook, my mm -hmm. thought process. I mean, it's just like, like a ton of bricks. It just like hit me, you know, like overnight, like, wow, where does this come from? My so, husband did that too. I didn't realize that you also were enlisted in commission. Yeah. So, so he did 13 of each. Yeah. Yeah. So I did uh 15 enlisted and the other 10 commission. Wow. So, so um, what, what was what did you do in the army? What type of work? What was your billet like? Well, starting off, I was a light uh, light wheel mechanic, and you know, knowing about um, automotive, and um, that was an easy transition because uh, I was able to go into um, logistics, and mm -hmm. it's an actual um, combination of you know the quartermaster um, maintenance side mm -hmm. and transportation. So that actually gave me another uh, scope of everything that goes into um, even helping other countries and how much money we actually spend to help people. So, yeah. you know, when you say you want to need help, it's not free. Somebody That's why right. it isn't just, okay, if we're going to give you $10 million, it costs us $10 million. Yes. There's a lot more overhead. Yeah. But I bet you working in logistics also, I'm getting a little bit ahead, but I bet that's helping with your business as well. Oh, huge. I mean, it, it, it just opened my eyes and understanding because um, I know how the uh, the shipping and the transportation mm -hmm. and um, the, the work orders and everything and job orders, everything um, play into um, a key portion, especially the purchase orders. Yeah. So, um, going back into once I enlisted, just going through things. And of course, I was uh, uh finding myself within, you know, the military because they, they pretty much break you down to find out who you are. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's good and bad. It's not for everybody, but for me, it, it was actually one of the best things that changed my life completely because I not only um, was a part of a, a larger family, I also left the country and mm -hmm. saw a whole different aspect of 
culture and life. So it just opened everything up and a lot of stuff that we take for granted. I'm like, wow, okay, I get it now. I understand. Yeah. And it's so great to be an American and people take everything for granted. So when you can say, I see people and they be complaining about stuff, it kind of like, those one of my pet peeves. I said, you have no idea how fortunate and blessed you are not only to be an American, but to be in America. So yeah, that's, that's just me. You know, yeah, so. and we're, we know we're not perfect, but you yeah. know, we're humans. Humans can never be perfect. Exactly. But even though we're not perfect, I'm with you. I'm, I, I'm so glad that I was fortunate enough to be born an American. Yeah, yeah. You know, true, true, and blue all the all all the way. And um, even okay. when uh, speaking and growing up, you know, you try to articulate and respect everyone. So certain things that I just wouldn't do, I always led by example, but to be an outstanding leader, you have to be a even better follower. So I followed and listened and understood a lot of aspects. And then in the uh, midst of this transition of when I got deployed. So when I got deployed, of course I was scared. I mean, because my platoon sergeant who was in charge of my, my squad, all of a sudden, I'm not saying it was on purpose. You know, he injured himself and he's supposed to lead our section into combat. Mm -hmm. And then you know who's up next? I was. Oh. Uh, I'm like, OMG. <laughs> what is really going on? You're like, I thought I'd have a little bit of time yeah. to get settled in. A little bit, a little bit. But it was uh, one of the greatest things that I experienced because I was able to bring everybody together going through multiple dust storms, um, coming together, convoys, training. And then in that, you know, you're in a different country, you have different cultures you have to understand and respect. And also, you know, the way of life as in the things that we consume, it changes how body functions. So mm -hmm. in that experience, going through the hot, dry uh, heat, you know, during the day in a cold, blistering at night because the temperature was so drastic in the desert and then it just uh, spurred a moment it would just uh hit you hard and then mind you we had these five gallon cans that we needed that we were having the sun all day so we can hook up to our uh battery offered showers to hook up to our five gallon cans to have warm water at night so oh okay yeah it was pretty cool but you know yeah, yeah. When we, uh, the the desert thing, yeah. For those of us who haven't been in the desert, other than just driving through, traveling, <laughs> it's so hard to imagine. We can kind of imagine how hot it must be, but the extreme changes and how cold it gets at night. So, how cold does it get? Like, if it's 120 during the day, what would it get to at night? Um, it can drop to like 90, 80 degrees, which you wouldn't think would be anything, but. Think of it, you've been sweating in yeah. that temperature all day, so you're freezing. Yeah, so 90, so 90 is cold yeah. if you, that's yeah. Right. No, yeah, because right. that's, if it's a 30 degree swing, yeah. Oh, goodness. So we would have AC during the day for those that was fortunate and uh, heaters at night, which would be the pot belly stoves and other things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, just to stay warm, you know, of course, um, winter gear. So I'm like, why well, you got all this stuff? And of course, we packed everything and you, you need it, you needed it, you know? So yeah, that, that experience transpired in regards to not having enough energy during the day, uh, the water missing all the key nutrients that our body needs to actually function efficiently and wondering what was going on because uh, at that time before AFES was able to get established there, we had to filter our own water. So of yeah. course the, um, the water, uh, uh, purification unit came and did the thing. We drank our water, but it's like, what is this? You know, mm -hmm. we we had all those chlorine tablets and everything, so we did everything we needed to do. Um, but you know, you still was tired. You know, it's like something was wrong, something was missing. Yeah. So in that, you know, I started, you know, thinking, what's going on? And the voice said, water. <laughs> I said water. I said, okay. I wrote it down, and. So let me ask you this. I have chill bumps. Um, were you like laying in the bed at night when you heard the voice or felt the voice or whatever? Were you out working or what, you know, 
Um, yeah. You're just not quite sure, but you just remember that you. I heard, yeah, it was after, um, it was very scary. My, um, me and my, uh, one of my best friends, we was doing a recon to try to, to locate some AC units because we were burning up and we heard <laughs> that there was a AC drop, meaning, um, uh, somewhere in, I was in Baghdad at the time that they were getting a whole, like two to 300 AC units. Okay. The thing is. First come, first serve. And you yeah. have to, you know, get in where you can fit in pretty much. So me and me and my, my best friend, he actually had a vehicle at the time. And I, he said, hey, let's see if we can get some some AC units. You know, I said, yeah, let's, you don't, you don't know till you try. So we, right. we went out there. But um, during that time frame, you know, uh, a lot of stuff happened. So we actually got in a firefight that we wasn't expected because oh it was all the way to get the AC units. Yeah. What's happening? Okay. <laughs> so that's just a small little thing, right? Yeah, a little thing. And then, you know, I, we clean our weapons and I clean mine too. But the thing is for um, the variation of weapon you, you had, you know, it, a grain of sand can actually cause jams and stuff like that because Normally in America, we don't train in the desert like that. We're always yeah. in the woods or some other um, climbing or part of, of the world that we're preparing for, but not really the desert. So that particular day, my weapon jam, I've never been so scared in my life because mm -hmm. we were trained to fight back. So if I'm fighting back, I feel more confident because I have a fighting chance. Right. And my my battle buddy was still fighting. He said, just keep your head down. I got you. Don't worry. And at that time, I was praying. I'm like, Lord, help me. I said, I will double check and ensure my weapon stays super clean every time, no matter what. And mind you, you can't just clean your weapon during a firefight. Oh, you yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Time out. Time out. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But everybody uh, was able to, to get out of that situation because, you know, they didn't really stay and fight. So they shot some rounds and then okay. they, they, they left and then we, he said hey what do you want to do i said hey we're almost there now we might as well finish the mission mm -hmm. so we kept going and i'm um, doing that that period we were just i just had a moment and we was almost there and then you know that that voice came and said water and i didn't, I didn't think that number at the time and i'm like okay water and he said everything okay so i don't know i i i heard a voice and it was it said something about water he said, well, man, write it down. Who knows? It might mean something. He probably thought you were hallucinating. Yeah, he so probably he did. <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> <laughs> so we was able to um, talk to uh, the guys there that was having the AC units. And, of course, it wasn't um, um, Americans. It was actually uh, uh, some uh, Iranians there that was in charge of the um, oh. AC units. That's so, we able, so we was able to wheel and deal and 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 commandeer some AC units. It was a, it was a great awesome. <laughs> so, I mean, even though we went through that, it, it like turned out great. So, so on the way back, um, got dropped off everything, um, finished writing everything out. And mind you, I was in Iraq for like fifteen months, and it was it was you know trying because yeah. every day was different. Um, Try not to get complacent because it'd be times that, you know, you know, it's just like Groundhog Day. But that's when things happen and go wrong. So we were just staying vigilant and meeting yeah. the mechanic in that that realm. Um, always something to fix, things breaking down. Um, we even um, had spare tires for our vehicles, which wasn't really authorized because they had something called run flat. But we said uh -huh. run flat means you run a little slower. We said we're not having <laughs> yeah. that. We're going to run. <laughs> yeah. We actually had spare tires in all our vehicles and um, tow bars in case someone broke down to actually tow. So we actually did some serious planning oh, good. for that. And that, that helped me even to this day is in planning and getting stuff together. That's but great. that was the birth. That was the birthing from that experience, not thinking I was going to live through that and the voice not realizing what it was, but mm -hmm. that, that voice just spark something to keep going because for me if i start something i'm going to finish it and so, you, been so you got really after you heard that voice say water to you i guess you started thinking about it and what am i supposed to do or you know is yeah. 
and then and you started looking around and y'all had water but it mm -hmm. really didn't seem to be helping that much right right so i mean um writing it down but after i actually finished the deployment i was able to really get deep into research and mm -hmm. find out what's water you know and then and realizing that there's no real such thing as regular water anymore because it doesn't come from the stream doesn't mm -hmm. come from the well so when people say I drink regular water it's not regular if you're getting it out of a bottle so right it's regular water because everything you know? everything has been taken out of it basically right mm -hmm. exactly so it's so, the liquid but none of the minerals and mm -hmm. that would normally be in water exactly so that's so interesting because you know just as an average person i think if i drink a whole bunch of water i'm staying hydrated but you don't think about everything else that really should be in it yeah i mean you're hydrating but to the point it's not a complete hydration mm -hmm. um, cycle because i think at least three four hundred years ago we lived hundreds of years old and we didn't look like we look now you know yeah. you know i think pretty much everyone had great skin and great hair and everything because all of the key nutrients was in you know the water and mm -hmm. of course the food was more natural and from the earth yeah so it's, it's a complete cycle so water is the key of minerals that comes up from the earth you know from the rocks now from the mountains if you you think about it going seeping through the earth we pull mm -hmm. it up to consume and then of course all of the nurturing nutrients we get from our food that would complete the cycle Right. So we've broken that cycle. We're getting it from our food still, but we've eliminated it from our water. You know, I um I remember you told me one time that it wasn't just that people didn't drink enough water, that it was that a lot of them drank too much and that it diluted and correct me if I'm wrong, it diluted even further the nutrients that they did have in their body. Is that what you said or something similar? Oh, definitely. I actually uh, witnessed a, a battle buddy actually um, lose his life over overhydration. Oh, just God. Pushing. I mean, because, I mean, in the, the military, it's just this term, just drink water, drink water. Because mm -hmm. I'm drinking water, you don't think you will dehydrate, you know, or get heat, you know, yeah. or stroke or whatever you want to call it because you're hydrated. Mm -hmm. but now you get to the point of forcing yourself to drink, even though you're completely full. You know, you just push in everything out you and oh. depending on where you are, I guess, in your physical ability. That's so sad. Yeah. I have heard of the, I don't remember what you call it, but like when you drink too much and people that have brain damage or something. But, you know, that's kind of the only scenario that I've heard of the overhydration mm -hmm. and and god that's so sad that somebody thinks they're doing the right thing for themselves to keep themselves healthy and the last thing they're worried about dying from is too much water when they're in the water. Yeah. Yeah, so you got back and you researched water thoroughly and you began to learn that this that you or you began to learn and believe that then you could create a product that would put back in everything that we've taken out and help make people healthier. Yes, exactly. And the, the key was a lot of times people get tired of regular water. So my first um, original was Body Aqua, which is a flavored line, but it has a purpose. So uh, we spoke about functional beverages before, but mm -hmm. if you ask the question to some of the other competitors, I won't call their names, but flavored waters, what are their functions? What do they really do for you? Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't ask that question and they say, oh, it just tastes great. Mm -hmm. like, okay, everything that tastes great, you already know is not really good for you. But yeah. why not have something that tastes great or even better and is extremely extremely good for you. So mm -hmm. that's where Body Aqua comes in because it's the first and only diabetic friendly uh, flavored water line. And mind you, we have no colors like the red 40 or the yellow five. Mm -hmm. And then me going to different countries, they don't even allow, they ban those colors to be mm -hmm. in their drinks. But yet it flourishes through America. And yeah. those are one of the key sources why we have so much bad skin and acne and 
issues with, you know, our hair and the list goes on. And this, mm -hmm. that's just one piece to dye. So I have no colors in there. And of course, no artificial um, uh, flavors in regards to um, being all natural. So I use stevia plant and the agave plant. And okay. of course, you can question any source of, of sweetening. But I mean, in regards to what you get, you only get six grams in a whole bottle. Mm -hmm. So it's like not even anything. But you get over 1,000% of key nutrients that your skin needs as well as your body needs, not only to naturally boost your metabolism, but that actually complete the cycle to help you lose weight and look good at the same time. Interesting. Yeah, I find the the skin support beverage especially fascinating mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, and I'm sure your fitness beverage is also very different than others, but I've never seen skin support beverage, you know, with with nutrients added specifically for your skin. And as you say, the, or, the skin is the largest organ of the body yes, and your skin support beverage has the nutrients that are specifically targeting that organ. We oh, forget yeah. that it's an organ. Yeah, we do. And mind you, it's the first thing you see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so in that, when um, I was asked a question, like said, uh, they said collagen. So mm -hmm. people are selling collagen, but unfortunately I said, I love marketing because I mean, if, if you market it right, you can sell it. So mm -hmm. collagen cannot be sold. You know, it only can be made naturally by your body, by giving okay. your body what it needs to make the collagen naturally to support your skin. And that's where my cosmetic beverage, you know, body aqua comes in because mm -hmm. it can be the A, the B, the K, the biotin, the zinc, the chromium, um, all the key nutrients that your skin thrives for but can't account for on a regular basis. And yeah. we say one bottle a day will help keep the wrinkles and acne away. I need some. I keep <laughs> saying I'm going to order it. I need to. Um, what is the flavor? I know that you don't have any artificial flavors added, right. correct? correct? So if the skin support beverage, what does it taste like? Oh, it tastes uh, amazing. And mind you, the flavors used are naturally supported of the skin so okay. we didn't just pick a random flavor so it actually picked us because those are only ones we can use so lemon okay. lime um kiwi pineapple and cucumber lemon mm, all um, three of those sound delicious and, and all three taste amazing especially the cucumber you haven't tasted a cucumber drink until you tasted a body aqua cucumber it would it would knock any beverage off his tail and I can I'll put that against anything. Well and people we can order right on your website, right? Well not yet. Um we're revamping we have a new look in regards to okay. our trademark. Mm -hmm. So we'll be ready back on Walmart.com um okay. in the beginning of next month. Okay. And we'll be officially in Walmart in the near future. Um unfortunately the COVID pandemic pushed everything to the right. Our official launch date was supposed to be June the 9th. Yeah. Um, I just know that has come and gone. And, <laughs> and you can see the actual um, 47 locations in Florida that they've already allocated our, our beverages to go in. So that is happening in the near future. That's great, Sherman. Congratulations. That's a big achievement. Oh, thank you. And you're in, you're located in Florida, correct? Oh, yes. I Jacksonville. <laughs> Hello, Jacksonville. I lived there for about 15 years, so I consider it my second home. I know. It'd be yeah. even better if our Jaguars was playing better, but that's another. I story. know. Well, I lived there when we got the Jaguars. I moved there in 87, and so I was there when we got the Jaguars. I was there when Wayne Weaver flew in the night that we got there. We had season tickets and everything. So that was one thing I really missed when I moved back to Virginia was my Jaguars. <laughs> but I, I enjoy watching them and keeping up with them. So the so I thought that the the beverages are also for sale on your company website, but they're not right now. They will they're be passed on so. later. But your website is drinkbodyaqua.com. So anybody that wants to go learn more about your products can go to drinkbodyaqua.com. Are you selling on Amazon? Um, no, we're not. Um, we okay. used to, um, but you know, Walmart is actually working with us a lot better because people don't realize water is extremely heavy. 
Yeah. So in regards to what we sell, I mean, um, we, we probably make like one to two dollars per case. Um, so mm -hmm. each case is twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Um, but the weight alone is uh, I say twenty six pounds. Yeah. So for a, just for a twelve pack. But on our website, um, you can mix and match the cases oh, okay. on Walmart.com. Um, you can't mix and match. But if you email, we can still do that. So the prices are the same regardless. But you can order um, Body Aqua T-shirts on the site now. So oh, we'll okay. that available. I love your new packaging, your new look. Oh, thank Did you. Did you want to say anything about the new products that you have coming out? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, we actually added to um, our body aqua line by adding um, a, a drink just for the kids. So think of it when you go to school now, the only thing they have is juices or a juice box. And yeah. they have so much sugar, so much colors and dyes. It's all bad for the, mm -hmm. for the kids. So we actually call it kids aqua. So it's a, another version of body aqua but it's, it's healthier it's kid friendly um no colors no caffeine no sodium um no potassium because i mean a lot of stuff has too much sodium to begin with uh -huh. and all the key nutrients that your kid needs to give them what they need to actually get in shape because you have some kids that have issues with obesity you yeah know? So we want to target that but we call it the kids aqua fitness beverage so okay. This line for the kids that are active, that wants to be active, mm -hmm. that wants to be in shape. So we actually help everyone because every kid should want to be healthy. Yeah. And and you that, know, when my like kids it. were growing up, one of our friends had a little boy, very athletic. Well, both of the parents were athletes, very fit. They were mm -hmm. fitness professionals. The son was an excellent athlete, great baseball player. He was probably at the time like, I don't know, 12 years old or something. And, you know, he just looked just so in shape and so healthy. And then he went to the dentist and his teeth, the dentist was like, oh my God, this kid's teeth are horrible. What is going on? He had so many cavities and it's because he drank juice all the time. And it yeah. was pure juice, not fake stuff. And it was organic and it was this and it was that. And his mom thought she was doing the healthy thing, but his teeth were rotting out because he was drinking juice all day long. So a lot of people don't realize that, you know, they too much of anything. It, you know, it can be good for you, but if you drink too much, so that's good that you that you're you have another beverage because I can't think of really any beverage out there that's targeted to chill to kids. Well, Other than things like juice packs, you know, there are a few, but the key is, you know, they, they need key nutrients, especially growing up to, you know, for that thought process, their mind, mm -hmm. the body, and, you know, even the bone structure, because even with your joints, it's not just getting vitamin D, which you actually get it from being in the sun. But yeah. I know that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You but, know. Yeah. And that's what, yeah. So there are, I should rephrase what I said, there are drinks that target kids, but they're not healthy. You know, the juice packs that my kids used to drink and, you know, a little, um, so, but okay. So you have the new products coming out. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you've experienced as an entrepreneur that maybe you didn't expect that you think other entrepreneurs could learn from, learn from your experience? Oh, well, I mean, First of all, you know, you have to understand that the road is not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. uh, when people say we really want you to succeed, um, it's not genuine half the time because yeah. it's not them. You know, so the only uh, roadblocks that come in are the one that you allow to stop you. And mind you, you're going to have a lot because it's all about your vision and what you really want to um, be in this entrepreneurial realm that we call business. Because... Mm -hmm. Why do it to say, oh, I just want to have a piece of the pie. For me, I want the whole pie. I want <laughs> Good for you. I, I want to I wanna be the healthiest beverage on the planet, and I'm knocking everybody off, you know, because I, I reached out to, for example, the Cokes and Pepsis, and they just flat out turned me down. Like, oh, we'll wait till you're established. That's yeah. pretty much what they said. I'm like, well, it's too late. I'm not doing anything to establish you because, mind you, 
at that time, I wasn't a disabled veteran. I wasn't part of a wounded, wounded warrior. Um, you know, even with the VFW now and the American Legion, I'm all part of these um, key affiliates, even um, with the non um, nonprofit um, yeah. breast cancer awareness organizations as well, because that's one of the symbolizations of my uh, fitness line on there. That's why it's pink symbolizing because a portion of that oh, okay. breast cancer too. So everything I do, even to the flavors, they all have a purpose. That's, that's why wonderful. I, that. I did not know that about the color of the bottle. I mean, I knew I liked it. I loved the pink <laughs> bottle, but I did not realize that a portion of it goes towards breast cancer. Yeah, and the, and the name of the nonprofit is a I Will Survive. Okay. Uh, nonprofits, and they're a veteran-owned uh, company as well. Oh. So, oh, man. Hold on a second. I just lost you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You okay. froze up for a minute. It's kind of awesome. crackling a little. Sorry, y'all. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Are y'all having bad weather in Florida? Yeah, I heard it um, thundering and lightning earlier. Maybe that's what it is. Yet. So, yeah, you, we talked earlier about how it seemed like, like, especially when you were going after funding, that you would do what they said you needed to do. You would have everything in order, and then they would keep asking. They would add something else, add something else, so it constantly pushed it out further. Yeah, I mean, funding is a, a great thing. They say all of these great things that you need from the business plan to having your breakdown in Excel of banking, what you expect to get, uh, the cost of everything. And, you know, you can have everything down, but it'll always be something else. Yeah. And it just got frustrating. And, you know, I never gave up. And, I, you know, with my faith and what I've been through, I'm like, it's going to happen. And it's on yeah. your time. And, and I know everyone are not believers of, certain things but i mean yeah i didn't get uh blessed with this concept it would have already been out there so uh -huh. in a realm of what i have now and the funding it's it's all up to you and like i was telling you earlier um i cashed out my my you know life insurance policy my savings um mm -hmm. even my uh, my car doing a, a title loan, you know, it's like, what are you willing to do? And I, I've heard horror stories. People's lost their houses and this and that, but the key is what makes your product different? Right. And if you can, yeah, that's that question, key. there's a difference in doing those things that you had to do to get the funding you need and having a product that's definitely unique and different and in somebody that has run of the mill, whatever, that they haven't thought through, there's a totally different scenario. So yeah, I, I agree with you. You need to be willing to do whatever it takes to make it work, but you have to make sure that it's something that is valuable, that's useful, whatever, that it really has a shot at making it and that it isn't just an ego trip. Yeah, definitely. You know, and um, we, I was in Whole Foods for a while in the East Coast in six states. Uh -huh. Doing very well. And unfortunately, oh. when um, Amazon acquired Whole Foods, you know, they say they're for the little guy, but that's, you know, the proof's in the pudding. A lot of oh, those guys have pushed out, you know. God, that sucks, Sherman. I didn't know that. Yeah, and I and I bust, bust my tail. Me and my uh, partner, we actually drove to at least 30 to 40 Whole Foods um, mm -hmm. to get in there, just talking to them and wow. to understand. And then once uh, we found out who the region manager is, because Whole Foods is run by different regions, not just one corporate office. Okay. So, so we had different opportunities to get in there, but it was, it worked out that we got in the East Coast region, which is six states like Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina, mm -hmm. North Carolina, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, um, all of them, we were selling in all those states and doing great. And they said we had a great rating. Wow. And they didn't understand why they didn't want to continue our product. Yeah. So, and, and you never know. You never know what's going on behind the scenes. And I feel like you'll be back in there, though. I will. 
have a fly I'm, flying around in front of me. Sorry. It's like no, you're fine. But someone told me because um we had Psalm 27. We still have it on the bottle, but it's hidden. You can't really oh okay. Now. But you know, a lot of people are offended by religion. So um, mm -hmm. and I understand that we don't we shouldn't put it on certain things, but we had it on our, our pilot because based off what we've been through and lived through, um was it was only, you know, God that made us through because we've seen people I know I have that didn't make it. They yeah. Didn't, didn't come home and in one piece and the same mindset, you know, it totally changed them, you know, and even for me, you know, anxiety, depression, the whole nine, you know, things that you go through, but people don't realize the sacrifices made to this country that you love, but then you have issues of saying, well, you shouldn't say veteran, you shouldn't say this. And I say, why not? Mm -hmm. We've earned that right to say that I'm a veteran and I I feel I should have certain things that others could um, don't have because I've earned that. And yeah. You know, I help defend the freedoms we enjoy today. So, yeah. Well, I want you to, <laughs> well, I want you to know personally how much I appreciate it. And I know <laughs> most people out there do. So. Um, one thing I didn't say earlier when I was talking about the NASCAR team is that Body Aqua is the first black owned and service disabled veteran owned sponsor in NASCAR. There have been and are black owned sponsors and other service disabled veteran sponsors, but black owned and service, service disabled veteran owned sponsors. And I should have a disclaimer as far as we know, we've never been able to find another one. As far as we know, Body Aqua is the first black owned service disabled veteran. And so I'm really proud of that, especially with everything that we have going on now, where people think that most of us don't like each other and it's just not true. So I think that it's great that we have you as a partner. It, it, a positive role model type thing, a positive partnership for the public. Oh, definitely. I want to be able to bridge the divide because it's all about understanding dynamics of what we mean for each other. I mean, yeah. because, honestly, we built the country, but the thing is, it was our races that was here. So to me, there's certain things that are dividing us from coming together. And mm -hmm. those, those are not even Americans. So I'm like, what's the disconnect? Yeah. You know? So, it, you know, it, it's nothing but love. And that's why I, I fight so hard. I believe in what we're doing and helping other people. And I want to be a beacon to be one of the main people to not say who's going to do what. I'm saying I'll be able to do that, you know, and yeah. of saying I'm going to wait for someone else. Well, and that's one of the things that I love about working with you, Sherman, is because you're always so positive. You're like a, a ray of light in my day whenever I communicate with you because you, you're just always so positive. Now, I'm sure that you have times that you're not that positive. I'm sure at home or whatever, you have your times that I don't see, as <laughs> everyone does. But I do love working with you just because I just feel this... I don't know, like I said, ray of light for you or whatever. It probably sounds ridiculous. People think I'm crazy. But you, I feel really proud to be working with you. And hopefully, um, you know, we plan to do the Racing to Combat Veteran Suicide, promoting the free services available through Racing for Heroes and the Rosie Network and possibly other um, nonprofits in the future. We plan to do that throughout Colin Garrett's entire racing career. So, you know, that hopefully will be like at least 15 years or so. So if anybody out there wants to be a part of it, join Sherman in being one of our partners. We'd love to have you. I'd love to talk to you about it. You can message me on Facebook. <laughs> Sherman, is there anything else that you wanted to say or any other tips that you want to give to any entrepreneurs? I mean, honestly, um, always be yourself. A lot of people try to be something they're not. I mean, yeah. like you say, I need to write a book. But honestly, I mean, my book is still being written. It's still and being written. I was going to say, you're going to write the book. You're going <laughs> to wait 
because you need to write it, you know, when you've been like, see, I told you so, you know. Yeah, but I think there's some things, you know, when people say, you know, I'm willing to do anything, you know, um, quick example, you know, it was uh, um, another uh, immigrant that came down and was fortunate to actually be one of the coal packers that I needed to make my product. And this, this is when I first got my deal with Whole Foods. For, oh, okay. And, and at that time, still in the military. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then he said, I am not going to make your drink. I'm like, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? I already paid you. No, no, no. I'll refund you. Don't worry. I'm like, no, I don't want a refund. I want my drink. I want my drink. I don't want no refund because <laughs> I've been working so hard. And mind you, there, without no product, there's no business. You yeah. Know? And I just got in Whole Foods. And they're waiting for my product to get purchase orders. I was writing. I was doing all the stuff. I'm like, nope. You're not. And you know, not going to take my kill my dream. So something told me that voice again. Go to Virginia, and that's where his his uh his uh co-packer, the manufacturing plant was. Okay. You know? And I was still full time active army, you know, and you know I didn't tell I wasn't truthful. My, my integrity was at question there, but I'm like it was an emergency, but it was my, uh -huh. my company, you know, because you know you always have to think, what am I going to do next? What's my next chapter? So, yeah. you know, I said I got an emergency, I have to take care of it. So. I ran the truck. I just left, you know, got there, drove, and I think it's like seven, eight hours away from where I was in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And he said, what are you doing here? Why are you here? I <laughs> said, I don't know, but some, you know, a voice told me to come here. And then he kept going on, ranting, ranting. And then the next, the next thing I said, well, I need a mechanic and I can't find one anywhere. You act like you're a mechanic. And then I said, well, actually, I am a mechanic. I've been a mechanic <laughs> for over 13 years in the Army. Whole picture, demeanor, everything changed. Huh. You know? But from that point on, uh, it was called a palletizer. Never seen it, never worked on it. But 12 hours later, that palletizer was fixed. So that was why he was saying he couldn't make it, because he had a piece exactly. of equipment broken down? Yep. Wow. It was. Huh. You know? And I fixed it. So that's I all. Awesome. plant, and I don't know if anybody would go to their plant fix a broken equipment and actually work in the plant on making your product help load the whole nine and roll and, out. I did all of that, that on my product. So that is the dedication of a true entrepreneur that believes in their product <laughs> and knows that they have something good. And I just can't wait, Sherman, for your success because I see it coming, buddy. I know it's coming. <laughs> I'm just happy that I've, you know, that I've been able to know you now for as long as I have, I guess, since January or something like that, you know, that I got to know you. Heck, even then you've been working in it 11 years, right? Yeah. So it seems early to me, but it isn't early. But, you know, early on in people knowing about you. So I'm so excited for your future. And I just know that Body Ock is going to end up being a household word. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I, I appreciate it. And it's all about certain people being a part of the team, part of your life that believes in you, you believe in them, and you you grow together. You should grow yeah. together up. So, and that's well, what I feel doing. like we were brought together to do good things for lots of different kinds of people. And, <laughs> and I didn't know the thing about, as I said, I didn't know the thing about breast cancer. So now... I know that by us partnering with you through our NASCAR team, we're also helping the breast cancer um, so, um, funding and supporters or whatever. So that's really cool to know. I really appreciate you joining me. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. My and pleasure. And everybody out there, I hope you'll go to Sherman's website, drinkbodyaqua.com. You can find out more about his products and what's in them. Even it, even the labels, right, Sherman? Exactly. Yeah, you can see everything on the labels, all of the ingredients. Check them out yourself. Buy a t-shirt. Go buy some of the products. <laughs> and I really hope you will check it out. And if you enjoyed this show with me and Sherman, I'm on here every Thursday evening at 7 o'clock Eastern, my Adaptable Entrepreneur Show, talking with a different entrepreneur every week. And sometimes it will be just me talking. <laughs> but <laughs> Most of the time I'm talking with somebody else. And if you missed any of the past shows or want to see upcoming guests, you can go to my website, 
lisakipsbrown.com. It's spelled L-I-S-A-K-I-P-P-S-B-R-O-W-N.com. Thanks to all of you and especially to you, Sherman. Oh, my pleasure. Have a, I hope you have a wonderful uh, what Labor Day. I can't believe it's called <laughs> Labor Day. I hope you have a wonderful Labor Day weekend and a oh, safe one. Everybody out there, happy Labor Day weekend, but please have a safe one. Thanks, everyone. All right.